What else can I make for this month? Mm, I did that. Mm, did that. Did that. Did that one as well. Mm. Oh, yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Max AC channel. For this month's theme, with fall fast approaching, I thought we could make some recipes that would be great to snack on during our last minute road trips before school begins once again. So, for this month, we will be doing September snacks once more, where I will be taking a look at five more easy to make and delicious snacks to enjoy as the summer comes to an end. For this episode, we will be making some potato chips. For this recipe, you will need two to three russet potatoes, one to two tablespoons of olive or avocado oil, and some seasoning. If you want to keep it simple, I recommend using about a half teaspoon of salt and some pepper. But if you want to spice it up, you can add two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of Parmesan cheese, and two teaspoons of parsley to make garlic Parmesan seasoning. Or you can use one teaspoon of paprika, two teaspoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, and a half teaspoon of chili powder to make barbecue seasoning. Or lastly, you can add two teaspoons of buttermilk powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of sugar, and one teaspoon of minced fresh dill to make sour cream and onion seasoning. To slice the potatoes, I recommend using a mandolin if you have one since it makes slicing them consistently in thin slices easier, but of course you can use a knife if you don't have one. Also, I'll be showing how to make these with an air fryer as well as in the oven, so you also need one of these. These ingredients are enough for about 2-4 to four servings, so just as needed. First, for your potatoes, before you slice them up, make sure to give them a wash and then scrub them to remove any dirt. Then, using your mandolin or a knife, carefully slice your potatoes into thin slices about 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch in thickness. Next, add your potato slices to a large bowl and then rinse the potatoes in some water until the water runs clear. And then, soak them in some ice water for 15 to 30 minutes. While we wait, we'll prepare the seasoning and preheat your method of cooking. In a small bowl, mix together your choice of spices until it's evenly mixed. Then, preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, or if you want to make them in the air fryer, Preheat that to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Your potatoes should be ready about now, so drain them from the water and then use a paper towel to dry them really well and dry the bowl used to soak them in. Next, once your potato slices are completely dry, add them back to the dried bowl and then add in your oil and half of your seasoning and then toss this until the potato slices are evenly coated. Once your potato slices are ready, your cooking method of choice should be done preheating. If you plan on using an air fryer, Line the bottom of your air fryer basket with your potato slices, making sure they don't overlap and aren't too overcrowded, and air fry them for 10 to 15 minutes, tossing them every 5 to 7 minutes to help them cook evenly until they crisp up and turn golden brown on the edges. If you plan on using an oven, to a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, add your potato slices arranging them in a single layer, making sure they don't overlap and aren't too overcrowded as well. Then, bake these for 15 to 20 minutes, flipping them halfway through until they turn crispy and golden brown. Once your potato chips are fully cooked and crispy, quickly transfer them to a metal bowl and toss them with the rest of the seasoning until they are evenly coated. If you need to make them in batches, toss each batch with part of the remaining seasoning as they finish before they cool. But once they're cool enough to touch, your potato chips are ready to eat.
Whenever I think of road trip snacks, potato chips are one of the first things that come to mind. With it being easy to grab one or two chips at a time while still driving safely, it's quite the convenient snack while on the road. However, because chips are typically quite high in calories, I usually opt for one of the other types of snacks instead. But with this recipe, since we're not frying them in oil, these chips are a bit healthier in terms of calories. So by making them on your own, you're able to save calories as well as some money without sacrificing your convenient crunchy snack. Also, by making your own chips, you're able to flavor them however you wish. Whether you want to keep it simple with just salt and pepper, or add a bunch of seasonings, you can customize your chips to suit your tastes. You can also add some flavor earlier in the process by soaking the chips in some salted water or vinegar instead to give the chips a salty flavor throughout, allowing you to make salt and vinegar chips. If you're having trouble getting your seasoning to stick to your chips, I recommend grinding your seasoning into a fine powder using a spice grinder if you have one to keep your seasoning from clumping up. This grinder, you can get it to stick best by removing the chips from the oven or air fryer as soon as they're done and immediately tossing the hot chips in the seasoning and it should stick for the most part. Also, by adding some sugar to your seasoning, it should help the seasoning stick better as well, which I think is why the barbecue seasoning seems to have stuck on better than the others. Another tricky thing with making homemade chips is that they can overcook and burn if you're not paying attention, which will also make seasoning them difficult. So if you see that some of the chips are done faster than the others, take these out early so that they don't burn and continue cooking the rest until they're done as well. These take a bit of practice to get right since each oven or air fryer cooks slightly differently, but once you figure out how your particular appliance behaves, it should be a lot easier to make the perfect homemade chips. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. In the comments below, let me know how it went if you decided to make it, and let me know if there's anything you want me to make next. Like the video, share with your friends and family, and subscribe to this channel for more episodes of the Max AC channel. And remember, if you want to stay cool in the kitchen, turn your AC to the max and watch the Max AC channel. Add them back to the dried bowl 